Welcome back to the electric skateboard build. In last week's tutorial I showed you how to make the mechanical side of the build and today we're going to be doing the electronics. If you managed to miss last week's build somehow then the link will be in the description as usual. So the electronics that I'm using in this build are all pretty cheap and most of them are bought off Hobby King and I'll put links to everything that I talk about in the description down below. Obviously there's loads of other brands and types of electronics that you can buy other than the ones that I've used and I've definitely not got the perfect setup here and I'm definitely going to be improving it in the future so I wouldn't recommend buying exactly what I've got. So first let's start from the beginning and have a look at the battery. For my board I'm going to be using lithium polymer batteries since these are what is always used in RC cars and most of my electronic parts are going to be from RC cars. I will put a link in the description down below to a video which will teach you more about LiPo batteries because they can be quite complicated, there's a lot of technical things that you need to learn about them before you can use them safely. I'm going to be using these cheap batteries from Hobby King and I'm going to be using two 3 cell batteries and I'm going to wire them in series to create one 6 cell battery. So once I've got my batteries, first thing I'm going to do is chop off the weird connectors that they have and solder on some XT90 connectors. The reason that I'm using XT90 connectors is because they've got anti-spark protection which is going to mean that it's fine for when I unplug and plug in the batteries. The next step is to connect both of the batteries in series. This doubles the nominal voltage of the two batteries which means I can get more speed out of the motor. To connect the batteries in series you take the positive from one battery and need to connect it to the negative on the other battery and I just did that by making this sort of triangle connection out of XT90 connectors. And then I've got these both connecting together so you can easily disconnect the batteries. The next step is charging the batteries and this is a whole nother skill in itself and for that you're going to need a suitable balanced charger that's going to work. I'm using a laptop power supply to power the balance charger. Attached to the charger itself I've then got a balance charging plate which means that I can connect two of my batteries together so I can charge both of the batteries at once. This connects the batteries in parallel since parallel charging is much safer than charging the batteries in series. So that I could connect my batteries on it came with XT60 connections but I needed the XT90 connector. As you can see I just soldered on an XT90 connector. Once I've got the batteries connected into the charger like this I can then actually charge them. To fully charge the batteries it takes around one and a half hours but if I had a more powerful charger it would be quicker. If we follow the cables down the board you can see that the next thing that needs to be wired up is the speed controller otherwise known as the ESC. This is the device which takes the input power from the batteries and then chops it up into three different phase wires which it then feeds into the motor and turns on and off the power to each of the individual poles of the motor to make it spin at different speeds. I used a cheap track start ESC which was from Hobby King again but I actually wouldn't recommend this ESC and I'm upgrading it very soon. The reason I wouldn't recommend it is because it's not made for electric skateboards so it has weird accelerations and things like that, it's just made for a small RC car, it's not made for riders with this much weight. Also it's really annoying because when you turn it on you can hear it's got a really loud fan. Also this ESC is kind of dangerous because sometimes it breaks and malfunctions and at the moment it's actually not working at all because I think the vibrations from the board have just completely ruined it. Instead I would recommend buying, an, buying a VESC which is designed by Benjamin Vedder and it's actually a proper ESC custom made for electric skateboards and I've got one of them on the way at the moment. The first thing to connect to the board are the three phase wires for the motor. I then attach some wires to the positive and negative terminals and solder them onto another XT90 connector so that I can plug it into my batteries. I can then take my connector that I made earlier out of XT90 connectors, plug two batteries into one end and then on the other end it combines the two batteries together in series to make a 6 cell battery then that end can plug straight into my ESC so then it's got power. I can then look at starting to attach things onto the bottom of the deck. The first thing that I do is mount the ESC very close to the motor so that when, it, when I turn on the deck the wires don't get stretched too far. I made a temporary protective cover out of just thin sheet aluminium. This isn't permanent, it just means that when I ride the board in version 1, I don't get too much gunk or mess inside the electronic components, since that could probably break them. This sheet will be removed and replaced with a proper enclosure once I get time to make one, with upgraded electronics and everything. 
Another thing that you're going to need is just going to be a cheap remote control for RC cars and this is the one that I'm using, I'll put the link in the description down below. It's kind of big and bulky and you only really need the accelerator, you don't need this thing that's meant for turning and it's very cheap and very reliable. And in the future hopefully I'm going to upgrade this to like a wee nunchuck or something like that which is much smaller and looks a lot cooler. The receiver from this remote plugs straight into the ESC and I just use some hot glue to glue down the antenna. This is what it looks like when I've got the batteries placed on the deck and I was originally planning on running some thick 12 gauge wire all the way along here and having the batteries mounted a little bit further back that'll maybe look a little bit more elegant and I might do that in the future but at the moment this mess of cables sort of reach a little bit further. So all that I'm going to do is use some strips of aluminium to hold down these batteries and then create a cover for them and hold down the wiring like this and hopefully that should be fine. Once the batteries are clamped down then version 1 of the board is pretty much complete and it's time to test it out. I'm pretty pleased with the performance but there are a lot of things that need improving. Firstly the range is actually quite good but I can still improve it by adding a third battery. And that brings me onto the top speed. The top speed's roughly about 25km an hour and that's actually pretty fast but it's just slightly not fast enough to make it really scary and fun to ride. So what I'm going to be doing to improve the speed is I'm going to be replacing the cheap speed controller I've got with the VESC speed controller and that can take a much higher voltage. So then I can put three batteries in series which will up the voltage to a nine cell battery and my motor can actually take that speed. So that will mean that it will be able to go much faster. On top of that I'm also going to be adding bigger wheels, another 10mm in diameter. Since these wheels are quite small they don't really give me enough ground clearance or protection when I'm going over big bumps. All of these upgrades will be shown in a future video once I've made it and the link will be in the description down below once it's up. Thanks for watching, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you did please hit the like button down below and subscribe. If you want to see more regular updates on what I'm doing you can check out my Instagram which is the art of weapons and also if you want early access to any of these videos then you can consider supporting me on Patreon. The link will be in the description as usual.